The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. It's mid-September. Look at those soybeans. Those soybeans are ready to come off. What does that mean? You can plant wheat. What's the number one way to get better wheat yields? You plant wheat early. So for goodness sakes, I know it's wet right now, but it's it's if you can plant wheat in September in Ontario, that's almost always a good thing. So as soon as those beans get out of the field, plant that wheat. It's number one thing. But there's lots of other things that you got to consider because in some places like Essex County, if you go in September, oh my gosh, that's early. Meanwhile, if I'm at New Liskard, I'm getting so late that boy, I better, I better change something. What do you change? You change the seeding rate. So Joanna Fallings, the cereal specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food has done a super job. Weather Innovations ran the numbers. There's a new optimum planting date map and you have to know your optimum planting date. Right here, Bornholm. We're at the Bornholm Research Farm. What's the optimum planting date? I was at a meeting. Not one producer knew what the optimum planting date was. It's September the 20th. They asked me to speak at the meeting and talk about early planting dates and the meeting was on September the 13th or 14th. Gosh, if the optimum date is the 20th, September the 13th not early. If you're within a week or 10 days of that optimum planting date, then you're in the right window. And why does that matter? It's for seeding rate. So you must match your seeding rate to your planting date. Go to the map, go cereals.ca. That's where the map is. Find your optimum planting date. If you're, if you're in Essex County and you're gonna plant September the 20th, pull that seeding rate back, 800,000 seeds per acre. Don't forget that Eric Watson, the world record wheat grower, the highest wheat yield, 258.8 bushels per acre, he seeds at 500,000 seeds per acre. So don't be afraid to pull back when you're early. But my gosh, if you get late and here at Bornholm, if it's October the 1st, most growers would say, hey, Pete, I'm in the optimum window, baby. I'm gonna, I'm just perfect. No, you're already late. September 20th is the right date. You're 10 days late. Now you have to start upping that seeding rate. So instead of that normal 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, now we're pushing 1.8, 2, 2.4. So play the seeding rate because it counts with your planting date. Plant it early, make sure you get that right seeding rate. But the other thing that everybody's talking about is, oh my gosh, phosphorus prices have gone through the roof. So what about phosphorus? Well, this is so cool. We're at the Bornholm Research Farm. Unfortunately, it's the last year for this farm. It's too bad, but we've had the long-term P and K trials here for 10 years. So what we've done in the long-term P and K trials, we basically, we did, we spread no fertilizer across corn, wheat, soybeans, no fertilizer whatsoever in, in some blocks. It's a four rep trial. And in other blocks, just phosphorus, other blocks, just potash, and blocks with both phosphorus and potash. We're only gonna talk about the no broadcast fertility versus the both phosphorus and potash fertility. By the way, in wheat, potash doesn't matter, but to still the two we're gonna talk about. So when we came here, the phosphorus level in this soil was a 13. And what is 13? And most of you are gonna say, oh, no stinking clue, Johnson. What the heck is 13? 13 is the break point, just happens to be the break point. And below 13, we're quite sure you'll get a huge response. 13, you start getting less response. We'd like it a bit better than that, but that's sort of the break point. It's really interesting on this beautiful clay loam soil, on a 13, I couldn't get response to phosphorus on the wheat crop of any nature, all three, four, five bushels. But at our other sites, we had four, three other sites, and we'd get sometimes 20 bushels. Here we got just a little bit. Soil test of 13, just didn't work. Think about it though, we pulled back the soil test where we didn't broadcast anything, just starter, never applying as much as the crop took off. And so where we didn't apply any broadcast fertility at all, the zero, where we did the zero, we pulled that phosphorus number down to an eight to a 10. So we, like we pulled it down into that responsive zone. On the other hand, where we broadcast, and we did this purposely, we broadcast big amounts of fertilizer 
And so where we broadcast both P and K, we built that up to a 20 to a 25. And we also built up the potash, but as I say, in wheat, potash just isn't a big deal. So then we do the starter fertilizer treatments. And the starter fertilizer, so we did a zero check, so zero. We put no starter fertilizer on and we put 100 pounds a map. So 50 pounds of phosphorus. What do you think the yields were? Well, with an eight to 10 and a zero, the wheat yield was 66 bushels per acre. It was in the tank where he put just 100 pounds of map on. This is the only difference. Lousy soil test, 100 pounds of map, 94 bushels per acre. That is a 28 bushel per acre yield increase. We, we almost increased the yield by 50% for crying out loud. That's unbelievable. Where we had the good base fertility, we apply no starter, 94 bushels per acre. Exactly the same as a low soil test and where we put on that starter fertilizer. If we put the 100 pounds of map there, 97. And that's like, wow. So what does that tell you? Well, that tells you on good loam soils. So the Oxford County silt loams, the great clay loams in Perth County, the clay loams in Huron County. When you're on a loam, if your soil type is a loam and you've got a good base fertility, does seed placed phosphorus help? Yes, but it gives you three or four or five bushels. It makes the crop more uniform. It gives you better winter survival. I still want to do it. But man, if, if phosphorus is crazy, you don't need 100 pounds a map to get there. 50 pounds is lots. And if you have really high soil tests, maybe you, maybe you take a break this year. As much as I don't like doing that, maybe you can. You ask me about broadcast fertility. Well, gosh, broadcast fertility, yep, it's about the same as, as 94. You're not gonna gain much, but at least you're not giving up a whole lot on those really good soils. The difference, of course, becomes if you are on a low soil test, on a low soil test and you give up on that, that starter fertilizer, you are given up 28 bushels per acre. You can't do that as well. Move to a heavy clay soil and you don't get the root growth and suddenly we'll get that 28 bushel per acre yield increase even with a 30 phosphorus soil test. So there you have it. Get the wheat in the ground. You've got the chance. Set yourself up. Pick the right seeding rate and for goodness sakes, don't ignore phosphorus on your wheat crop, but pick the right rate and pick the right rate based on your soil type and based on the doggone high price of phosphorus this particular year. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, realagriculture.com. If you follow those three things, man, you are on your way to maybe the best wheat crop you've ever had in 2022.